The festive season wouldn't be complete without colourful lights and terrible sweaters. In this video, I'm going to combine the two into an e-textiles project with custom LED boards stitched to a Christmas sweater. Hi, I'm Mark Harris. I've always struggled to find a wearable PCB that excites me enough to use it. I want something more than a single static or addressable LED. I also want something small, but it has to be low cost so I can use lots of them without breaking the bank. Therefore, I'm designing a compact, cheap and colorful blinky LED board with an onboard microcontroller. I'm basing the board around the microchip ATtiny416. It's the cheapest microcontroller I could find, which has a dev board and at least four independent PWM outputs. I'll need the PWM outputs for fading red, green, blue, and white LEDs. Single pin programming is a substantial bonus feature for a project like this, since I won't have room for a large JTAG or ISP header. The RGB LEDs are 0606 size, which you can source from multiple manufacturers, some of which are far cheaper than others. I couldn't find a cheap RGB white LED, so I'm using a separate standalone white LED. Instead of just having power for the board, I have input and output pins. I want to be able to daisy chain the boards together for the effect of chasing LEDs. This way, depending on the firmware loaded onto the board, these can be standalone or part of a larger circuit. You can find the board design files and source code on the Element 14 community if you want to make your own blinky LED boards. I'm going to build a lot of these so I can use them with the local girl guiding group after I have proven the design. With all the resistors being 0201 sized, let's head over to the pick and place machine rather than doing the boards by hand. It's not unreasonable to place 0201 resistors by hand. Still, some days when hand placing them, I misplace more on my bench than I actually get on the board. Look away and suddenly they vanish. Before we can start programming these, I will need a way to connect with the board. Soldering power and UPDI wires to every board would take far too long. So designing a programming jig is easier. Programming jigs mean pogo pins. These are so fun and super convenient. Altium lets me transfer my design to SolarWorks quickly to get perfect alignment on the test points. The first version of this fixture used the smallest pins I stock for the connections and wasn't reliable enough for my liking. Version 2 is a bit beefier, using 2.5mm pogo pins. I also replaced the in and out pins with 2mm screws to positively locate the board and stop it from being able to move around as I clamp the board down. Printing the fixture in translucent plastic worked out really well. I can still see the LEDs light up, making debugging code easy, but it's also diffusing them, making it much more pleasant to have on my desk. These tiny little LEDs are painfully bright points of light at full brightness. Hi, I'm Derek, and this is DC to Daylight, where we explore the world of electronics in the realm of DC, audio frequencies, RF, and into the visible spectrum of light. Here we take electrical engineering topics out of the boring old textbook and bring them into life through demonstration and test. Sometimes we even build stuff, and if there's a way to test the concept at hand, we'll put it on a scope and measure it, and in doing so, hopefully bring it to daylight. So if that sounds like a good time to you, come hang out with me every couple weeks here at Element 14 Presents. All right, see you there. I would typically program something simple like this without using Arduino libraries. As I plan to use these with kids and let the older ones write their own code, I want to make it as simple as possible. I'm using the platform IO extension to Visual Studio Code. This extension provides the Arduino libraries and build chain for the project. 
It's my first time using it and it was zero effort to get up and running. At the start of the code, we have a set of definitions that configure how the board will operate, either standalone or as part of a chasing LED chain. A mask, which determines which LED colors will light up, allowing the board to be used for a select set of colors. I have written functions for fading the LEDs using one, two, or all channels. Unless you want to use a single color, the code will randomly select between these fading modes and fade at a random speed for a random length of time. For my sweater, I will make the reindeer's nose use only the red LED channel and make a ring of boards around its nose. I'm using stainless steel conductive thread to connect everything. However, while it's more conductive than cotton, it's not very conductive. So I'm using two threads in parallel to supply power to all the LEDs. This should minimize the voltage drop. The microcontroller will operate from 2.2 to 5 volts. Getting too far below 3 volts, however, means the blue and white LEDs won't light up. Obviously, I only have a vague idea of what I'm doing with a thread and needle. I would very much appreciate it if you could share suggestions in the comments on making life easier when sewing conductive threads. I would like to do more e-textile projects, but I need all the help I can get with the sewing part. Where the wires need to cross over, running a thread through a section of narrow heat shrink tubing makes it so there won't be any short circuits. I learned that I need to pay attention to the thread spacing to prevent anything from touching. It's worth testing the LEDs as each section is completed. I'm using a lab power supply to monitor the current draw and control the voltage. The tips of the antlers are getting boards programmed to fade all colors operating in a standalone mode. I'm sewing them all together, then joining them to the nose power ring. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like we are getting enough voltage up to the antlers. So let's add another pair of threads for the power to minimize the voltage drop. I want to put an LED board on every one of the white spots, snowflakes on the sweater, all chained together to form a chasing LED path. But this is turning out to be a lot more time consuming than I thought. Since I need to complete the project before a community event that's coming up, I'm just going to do the top part of the sweater. The chain starter LED is in the center and the signal will branch out before returning to complete the loop. Finally, I'm finished with the stitching and everything lights up nicely. My daughter loves it, so I'll consider the sweater a great success. What would I change for a second version of this board? I'd connect the in and out pads to the microcontroller pins with UART receive and transmit capability. This would let me have complex interactions between a chain of boards, something more like an addressable RGB LED. Besides that, I'm pretty happy with the result and will make a few hundred more for the girl guides. Thanks for watching. You can find all the design files on the Element 14 community. Don't forget, if you have any suggestions on sewing electronics to things, leave your advice in the comments because even the most basic suggestions are likely to improve my skills. Have a fantastic week.